Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class. And in today's video, I will be showing you the creation of four different cards, each featuring this awesome and really versatile creative die set called Framed 51-622. And real quick here, I'll give you a look at the cards that we will be making. And you can see by cutting and layering this frame, and in this one I'm just using the square portion, but there's also a smaller square and a circular portion. By layering them and adding your stamped images in different ways, you can really create some unique looks and it gives you the perfect home and place for sentiments or ways to anchor your images onto clean and simple cards. I'm going to be doing all of my coloring in today's video using Arteza Everblend markers. This is an alcohol-based marker that has a bullet tip and a chisel tip, and I found I really love these markers. And there will be a full, full supply list at the very end of this video that lists all of the colors that I'm using, all of the stamps, all of the dyes, everything, paper, inks, everything will be listed. So to begin, I'm going to be stamping our 30-704 Wings and Vases, and this does have the exact match cutout, vases cutout, that I will be using for my card as well. I'm stamping onto smooth, heavyweight cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is a perfect ink for coloring with these Arteza Everblend alcohol-based markers. And I am just starting with putting down my darkest color. I love using the bullet nib on these markers. It makes it really easy to color in detailed images such as this. And I'm putting down that darkest color sort of underneath or in areas um, that would be the darkest part of the petals, petals that are behind or under a fold of a petal. Now that was a bit of a red color and here I'm going in and just adding a bit more of a pink on top of that. So it's very easy to mix and match the different colors of markers with these. You can just really, I try out on scratch paper for different combinations that I like and I find that they really blend together well. You don't have to worry about sort of matching up certain numbers or letters when you go to do your coloring and your blending. So you can see here I'm just adding in a lighter pink to the lightest areas and coloring these in. Now the kind folks at Arteza that make these markers um, have offered a coupon code for all of you Penny Black fans and I will have that for you down in the YouTube description box below along with links to the stamps and the markers that I am using. So I went ahead and used that same technique to color in all of the flowers on this particular image. You will see I have my die cut pieces there over to the left and I'm just trying to kind of match up my colors to those, to that pink of the die cutting. And then I decided just for some variety in color to add some yellow centers to these flowers. You can see here where that bullet nib makes it so easy to color these small details while staying in the lines. and then I'm adding a lighter green and I'm actually going to add just a touch of blue to this as well. And you can see again how easy it is to blend these colors even when going from green to a blue. Now down here on the vase, I'm going to do these darker areas with the bullet tip of the marker. I'm just going to kind of go around the edges and then I'll be lighter in the middle just to kind of give the illusion of some bit of a curve to the vase. And I'll go in with my lighter color overlapping onto that first color and then extending further beyond into the center of the vase. Then I will grab my lightest color and since I have a large open area to color, I will go ahead and use the chisel tip for this and just kind of feather that on, overlapping into the other color that I have already put onto the vase. Now I'm going to continue sort of working assembly line style, so stamping and doing all of my coloring before I assemble the cards. Next I'm using our stamp set Country Charisma and it has the exact match cutout available. I love the different watering cans and flowers that are included in this set. 
There's really no limit to the different types of bouquets or scenes that you can make with these. You could have even do a little critter popping out of these watering cans. You can have the flowers surrounding them. I just think there's so much charm to this and can be used in so many different ways. It's great for spring and it's also really great for summer or all, all time of the year when you're sending birthday cards or um, thinking of you cards to someone. Again, I'm just putting in my darkest colors first and using the bullet nib, I'm going to feather on the lighter color. I decided to go in here and grab just a little bit more of a medium tone before I went in with that lightest color. So I'm just sort of feathering that on using the bullet nib for this larger area. Doing the same here on the handle. I don't know, for some reason I just love having this in red, this bold red, but you can also do it in more traditional colors like silvers and grays. And now I'll go in with that lighter color, slightly overlapping the mid-tone and then coloring in the rest of the image. And then I'll use the bullet tip there to get the edge of that handle. Now on this flower, I'm going to add some oranges and yellows, the darker color at the base and lighter moving up towards the top. And then off screen for this image, I also die cut our Bold Branch Creative Die and just to add some more fullness and variety to the bouquet. And you'll see that when I show the fully assembled card coming up here at the end of the video. I'll just add that lightest color here up at the top. Next I'm going to stamp our miniature 3 by 4 inch stamp blossoming boots and again I'll be using the exact match cutout and using the same technique to color these in. Again these boots are one of those ones where you can color them so many different ways. You could do a bold red or a yellow, sort of a traditional yellow to color these. You could do lighter colors for your flowers, keep things very pastel and springy. There's just so many different ways. I love images like this where just by changing the color you can get a completely different look to the design. I think it makes it even more versatile. So I won't show you all the coloring on these but just a touch here of the coloring of those boots. And then the last stamp that I'm working with is our daisy collection and I stamped all one, two, three, five of the daisies and used the exact match dies to cut them out. And to color them I just did basic coloring in the center and a touch of a light blue on a few of the petals for shadowing just to give it more of a finished look. So now I'm ready to stamp my sentiments and put these clean and simple cards together. The first sentiment I'm stamping is from our 30-680 million thanks sentiment set. I love this because of all of the variety of combinations you can use. Now I'm just holding my design in place using the magnets on my stamp positioning tool, the Misty, and then stamping this with Acorn Archival Ink. And I've just chosen this ink because I love this color. It's nice and dark, but it isn't really super stark like a black. And then I'm going to stamp the other portion of the sentiment from that same sentiment set right onto the face. And this I am stamping with Toffee Crunch Memento ink. And I chose this because it is a nice tone on tone look for the color of the vase. So now I'm ready to assemble. I've my cut, die cut my framed die set a couple of times from some colored cardstock from my stash. And I am just putting a dot of glue here on the corners um, and then gluing that down. And I'm not worried about putting glue all around all portions of the frame. If there's a little bit of dimension or parts where it sticks up, that's fine with me. But really everything went pretty flat. Now for my colored piece, I am adding some foam squares behind that and I will pop that up onto the front of the card. I think that gives some dimension that's often needed with a clean and simple design for a finished dynamic look. 
and I'll add a few self-adhesive pearls and this card design is complete. So if you are in the mood to just do some stamping and some coloring and you don't want to give too much thought to what am I going to do with these stamped images now that I've colored them and die cut them out, this frame die and this layout, and there's a few layouts I'll be showing you here, is really great for those stamped and colored images to get them onto your cards in a really beautiful, clean, and simple design. So here's a couple of looks at that finished card and all of the cards today are a standard A2 size card four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So for the next sentiment I'm going to be stamping this is our miniature transparent set 30-673 She Builder. This is one of my favorite sentiment sets from the Secret Garden collection we've just come out with. I am stamping the word she using Summer Sky Memento ink. And you can see I'm going to stamp this several times and it stamps light, but by repeatedly stamping it, I can keep building up the color till it's the perfect shade of blue. And then I am stamping the Just Shines portion using that Acorn Archival ink. You can see here I've used the framed die in a different orientation. I've just used one and put it sort of straight onto the card and added the sentiment down below. So again, another way to use this frame die to finish off your card, sort of give a home for your colored and die cut pieces to live. And like I said before, there is that bold branch die cut that I colored and added to my bouquet. Now for the next card, the sentiment is from 30-703 Blooming Sentiments. I think it's amazing how much these sentiments add. Now here I've layered two of the framed dies to create a rectangle and then I'm just adding this banner right across the center to sort of cover the area where they meet. You could also trim them so that you just see the rectangle shape, but I like the dimension that this banner adds. Again, with a very clean and simple design, dimension with white on white pieces I think adds so much to the card. I've stamped my sentiment down at the bottom of that rectangular shape and here I am just adding those blooming boots to the card. And here's a look at that finished card and I just added a couple of self-adhesive pearls along that banner piece in the center. Now the final sentiment for the daisy card is from 30-707 Magical Friendship and this I stamped in the rectangular or the square frame inside in the upper right hand corner and then I used the parts of that frame that are open to intertwine and sort of interlace the stems and flowers from that daisy set sort of creating a cascading look. And as a little bonus here I didn't show the creation of this card but this features the same techniques but I used some gold cardstock to cut the frame. So if you're looking for a very elegant look with the framed die cut, this is a great way to achieve that. I thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as our website and blog. And I will link to all of those for you down in the YouTube description box below. And here is the list of all the supplies as promised. Thanks for watching.